Okay, this uh, demo actually derives, I think I told you this before yesterday when I was talking about, this demo derives from a challenge that was given to me by a student. And that wasn't that hard of a challenge, but I thought it was very applicable to what we're doing. And he said, can you change color of a car? And the answer is absolutely. In fact, I've already taught you how. I just didn't show you exactly that thing. But when I showed you um, how to do adjustment layers, okay, that's the way to do it. Now, before we do that, let's demonstrate how not to do it really quickly and, and why. Um, if I, if I, I already um, pulled a selection on this, so just let me load it here. Boom. So there's a good selection. And if I wanted to, I could just make a new layer and I could grab a paintbrush. And this is, this is the way it used to be. Make it red and uh, just get a big paintbrush here and, and I can just, um, using the selection, I could just paint red. Okay. Now, what's the major problem that you're seeing with this right off the bat? It doesn't look good. Why doesn't it look good? Let's turn that off. Yeah. Guys, guys, one at a time, please. All the highlights and the shadows and everything are gone. The car now is basically like a stencil cutout, isn't it? Okay, it doesn't look really good. Now, I can try to work with my layers and do something like a screen, which does some funky stuff because it, you know, or an overlay. Um, the other option, oh, that kind of looks cool actually, but that's not what I would want to do, okay? That's, that's not good. Because no matter what I do with this layer, and no matter how I set it, it's going to be interacting with this layer on the bottom. Now, my other option is I can make this layer on the bottom grayscale and then add the color by, back in with a new layer. And we used to do that, I used to have to do that sometimes when I would colorize old black and white photographs. You just paint full opacity on the top layer and then you'd set, the, um, you'd set the, that layer to overlay and it would bring in colors to the, to the black and white photograph. Kind of cool, fun for a couple of times and then after that it got really boring. Um, I can't believe that people used to do that with those old movies, colorized movies, that was done by hand. It's just crazy, okay? Because there's 24 frames every second of a movie, like, okay, go figure that. So anyway, um, so I've got that, but a better way to do it is to actually use the adjustment layers like I've shown you. So I've already done it here. So I've got my selection, let's just trash this layer. I've got my selection here and you can see I've already pulled a, a, a put a mask on it. And all I did, we'll just show you what I did. Um, is I just used my, um, my quick selection tool, okay? And I went along here and I just built a selection and being very careful only to get the yellow. So in places where I got things like, um, you know, the, uh, the hood scoop here, the gray hood scoop, I don't, I don't want that, okay? I don't want that at all, so I'm gonna hold the option key down and make sure I subtract that. I don't want the license plate either, so make sure I get rid of that. Um, I don't want the grass. You know, so you just gotta make sure it's a really good selection here. These black parts here underneath the, the front fender, or not front fender, um, the, the undercarriage with the, the fairing basically, um, we don't, that's probably not gonna matter too much because it's black, it's not gonna shift colors so much. So that's, a, that's a one thing I would, want to say is uh, if I were looking for a car to do this, picking a black car or a white car, not going to work very well. Because black and white don't shift. The colors don't shift. They stay black and white because black and white are by definition the absence of color or all colors put together, right? You guys pay attention please. So, you know, that's, that's, um, you know, that's really the definition. So if you've got white and black, guess what? They won't shift like this. Um, so you really need to make sure that the car you choose or whatever you choose already has a color. Thank you. Um, so anyway, once you've got a good selection, let's just say I do, it's kind of cool. Photoshop knows what you're doing. It knows what you're trying to do. So as soon as you add the hue saturation uh, adjustment layer, boom. It puts that right in there. You see that? I created that layer. And it, let's just do it again so you guys can see, okay? Um, so 
Watch. It's just going to create a new layer with the hue saturation, and bam, it automatically puts that, um, uh, the selection into a layer mask for you, which is really cool how it does that. So I like, I like the fact that Photoshop does that. Now, I've already done one that's better, a better selection, so let's just turn that on. And um, click on the layer, and now you can see that I can shift the colors of the car really effectively, making it a red car, a blue car, um, I can increase the saturation. And what's awesome about this is now, like Orion said, I don't lose my shadows, I don't lose my, my reflections, I don't lose anything like that because I'm just, I'm using the exact same layer. Now the second part of the challenge was to create a racing stripe down the middle of the car that also was not there. So what we're going to do is we can then try uh, to create a stripe of a different color too. So we're, I'm just going to take this back to normal. How would you suspect that I could create, actually let's do like a blue. How would you suspect that I could create a, um, a racing stripe? Let's do like a yellow stripe down the middle. How, any of you, would you think about how you could go about that? No? Well, we already have the method down. We need to use an adjustment layer, okay? And I'm just going to use the hue and saturation layer again. But this time, I just have to make a different um, mask, right? So what I can do is let's just add another. So I'm going to go here. So I'm going to click the arrow here, get out of that. I'm going to add another hue and saturation, okay? And I'm going to get the color that I want. Now notice it's working on everything. So let's say I wanted to add that orangish as a racing stripe. So now what I need to do is I need to, um, and what I'll probably do here is I'm just going to option click into my layer mask and just fill it with black. So I'm just going to fill it with black. Boom. Now once I get out of that, you'll notice that I'm back down to my blue color. But if I take my brush and I go in here and I start painting white, that orange is going to show up again. See that? And what I'm doing is you can see here, I'm painting the white here in the second hue saturation and it's creating that transparency there and allowing the orange to show through. Now, my major problem with this is, okay, if I do this, like I am here, even as good as I am with this sort of thing, it looks like I just took a $100,000 car and hit it with a spray paint can, doesn't it? Okay, it does not look very precise. And the reason for that is because I'm painting it by hand and you've got little wiggles and all sorts of other stuff that are not really creating a great line. The line is very imperfect. So, what I'm going to use is an existing tool that I already showed you to create a really nice smooth line. What do you think that might be? Hmm? Thank you. Very good. The paths tool. Now, I'm, go I'm going to, let's just uh, go back here and get black and I'm just going to paint this back in really quickly. Okay, so there's a crappy stripe. It's gone. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to my Paz tool and I'm going to grab my pen tool and I'm going to start drawing. But before I do that, what I want to do, if normally when you draw a path tool, it makes a shape, right? Um, or, you know, and you can choose that up here in the options, whether it fills it, whether it makes a shape, whatever. There's a couple ways of doing this. You could just make the shape and then you could rasterize it and copy and paste it. That would work. The other thing that you can do is you can make what we call a work path. Okay, and work path kind of exists in like nothingness. It's kind of like a ghost. It just kind of exists, but it's not really on a layer yet. And you can use it to create a selection. So what I'll do here is I'm going to make a new path and I'm going to start drawing the stripe that I want. So I'm just going to click and I'm just going to do straight lines for a second here so that I can um, manipulate them later and I'm putting points where I notice the natural curves of the car are. 
Okay? And I can go up and into the glass a little bit if I want to and then come back later or whatever. Um, you know, seems to work best. Boom, boom. So now I've got this work path and now I can go in and I can use the convert point tool and I can um, make that curvy. Come on now. Make that curvy, curvy, curvy. Um, make this a point with curves, you know, and just go in and really manipulate each individual uh, point so that it does exactly what I want it to do. So I'll take a look at this. I won't get it perfect here because I don't want to spend too much time on it. But you can see how I'm able to create a line that is so much better. Oh, look at that. It didn't break the handles. Okay, there we go. Um, I can create a line that just is so much better than what I had before. And it's going to look a lot more natural to the car, a lot more natural to the car. And I think overall is going to make this stripe look a lot better. I mean a lot better. So now that I've got that, let's just say that's perfect. I probably would spend a little more time on it, but let's just say it's perfect. Now there's this really cool thing, and I can save it too, um, and you can name them, which I think is, is a good idea. So I'm going to name this, I'm going to call this Stripe Path, <clears throat> and then I can go up to the menu that's over here, and I can say Make Selection. Boom. And now it's going to ask me do I want to feather it? No, not in this case. Feathering makes the edges fuzzy. We don't want to do that. I want an anti-alias should be on. You do want that on, okay? And we want a new selection. You can add to selection, which is kind of cool too. So now I've got this selection. If I go back to my layers here, make sure I'm clicked on my um, mask, grab my paintbrush again and some white, and just paint. The selection acts like a stencil, keeps me from going beyond the, the edges of the selection, and voila, let's deselect that for a second and take a look. Not too shabby. Now, one thing to make note of with my method here, because I have stacked two hue and saturation layers on top of each other, if I change the bottom one, which is my blue layer, it will also change the upper layer. Let me say that again. Because I've stacked them, if I change my bottom layer, it will change my, the upper layer as well. So take a look. If I change my blue, um, whoops, I'm changing the saturation. If I change the hue, you'll notice that the stripe changes as well. And that's because the hue saturation works on the layer below it. So the orange stripe layer is changing the blue layer the blue layer is changing the original yellow layer. Does that make sense? Because it scaffolds down like a ladder. So you have to be rather careful with this if you start to say, you know what, I don't like the blue, I like a different color, and you, sh you, you know, go to red, that looks hideous, okay? But all you gotta do now is just go back up to this one and, and change it again. But you I just want you to be aware of that. Ooh, it's a McDonald's car. Um, and Ronald McDonald's Cuda, yes. By the way, this is the coolest car ever made. No, the 1970s Cudas. This is a 71, I prefer 70s, but I just have to say. Um, this is the coolest car. So anyway, um, and by the way, this is a 440 uh, six pack with a hood scoop, the shaker hood that would go for roughly about $160,000, $150,000 probably on average. It was really, really good condition and all original. Yeah. So, yeah, they're very expensive. So, anyway, you get the idea, though. Now, here's the thing. Just let me say this. You could do this to a person's shirt. Put a stripe down a shirt if you wanted to, or on their pants, or shoes, or anything. But realize that when you get into wrinkles, it'll get really stinking complicated when you start making those, because you've got to follow the contours of the object. That's the key to the stripe. And if you guys look at it, it doesn't look quite right here. It needs to dip down a little bit more right here, I think, but it's pretty darn close. 
Um, but you just really want to be careful. You want to make sure that you're following the contours of the object. That's really key, okay? That's really key, or else this doesn't work very well. And you take your clues from this edge here, okay? So if I take my clues from this edge here, that's going to help me out a lot. Except it doesn't dip down like it does right in front of the windshield, so you want to be mindful of that. But you want to take your clues from other places. It looks like this is a little bit too extreme. This curve right here is probably a little too much. So I would just go back, fill this in, readjust my path, and then make another selection and just fill it in with white again. No big deal, okay? The other thing is now I would also go in and I'd start playing with some of the details. Like, see there? It looks like I just messed up and I, I ended. So. Again, my, my, my path wasn't as perfect as it could have been. The other thing you want to watch out for is notice little things like this. See the yellow reflection in the, uh, in the lights there, okay? And there's still a little yellow here. That's from the original. So I would need to go back down into here, get my brush, and uh, add, a, uh, add a little white in here to kind of allow that reflection to kind of come in. And I might not want to do so at full opacity. I might want to try and get a little gray in there. See, that's too much. Oh, it's not too bad, I guess. But you do want to watch for reflections of the object, too. Okay, so down in here, there's a stainless steel piece that goes across the nose of these things, and it reflects a lot of the color. See that? So I would want to include that in my selection. See, there's a little yellow there. So maybe a little less opacity and then just let all that stuff go so that it really does look like you're really changing the color. Does this make sense to everybody? Okay, done and done. Hopefully you can use it.